When you hear the name Isaac Newton, you probably picture an apple falling from a tree and a sudden realization about gravity. But the truth? That's just the tip of the iceberg. Today, we're diving deep into the life, mind, and legacy of one of the greatest geniuses in human history. And trust us, Newton was way more than just the guy with the apple. Born prematurely on Christmas Day in 1642 in a small English village, Isaac Newton was so tiny that no one thought he would survive. He wasn't expected to live beyond a few hours. But he did. And he'd go on to live a life that would shape the very foundations of science. Newton never met his father. He died before Isaac was born. His mother remarried and left young Isaac in the care of his grandparents. The boy grew up lonely, often bullied and deeply introspective. Some say his isolation may have been what drove him to spend so much time observing the world and questioning it. Isaac Newton wasn't a star student early on. In fact, he was considered average until he was provoked by a schoolyard rivalry. When a fellow student beat him academically, Newton made it his mission to surpass him, and he did, by a mile. He later enrolled at Trinity College, Cambridge, but Newton didn't thrive in traditional lectures. Instead, he taught himself, devouring the works of Descartes, Galileo, and Kepler. And then, the plague hit. In 1665, the Great Plague shut down Cambridge. Newton returned home. But while others saw this as a disruption, Newton saw opportunity. In just two years of isolation, what he called his year of wonders, he developed calculus, optics, and the law of gravitation. Yes, in his early 20s, Newton laid the foundation for much of modern physics. And you know, he did it all during quarantine. We've all heard the apple story, but uh, did an apple really fall on Newton's head? Not quite. The story actually comes from Newton himself, told much later in his life. He recalled sitting under an apple tree when he observed an apple fall. It didn't hit him, but it sparked a question. Why do things always fall straight down? Why not, you know, sideways or even upward? That simple observation led to one of the most profound discoveries in science, the universal law of gravitation. Here's a spicy historical fact. Newton invented calculus, but so did German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. Around the same time, this led to a bitter feud. Accusations flew. National pride got involved. Today we credit both men, but Newton and his followers accused Leibniz of plagiarism. Some even say Newton used his position at the Royal Society to sway the official investigation in his favor. Petty? Maybe? Genius? Undoubtedly. Did you know Newton spent more time on alchemy and theology than on physics? It's true. He was obsessed with uncovering ancient knowledge, turning base metals into gold, and discovering the philosopher's stone. He wrote over a million words on alchemy, in secret. These writings weren't published during his lifetime because alchemy was frowned upon. But they reveal a different side of Newton. Not just a scientist, but a spiritual seeker trying to decode the mysteries of the universe. Later in life, Newton took on a surprising role, Warden of the Royal Mint. Basically, he was in charge of England's money. And he took the job very seriously. He cracked down on counterfeiters with ruthless efficiency. He personally interrogated and tracked down forgers, often going undercover in London taverns. One infamous counterfeiter, William Chaloner, ended up being executed thanks to Newton's relentless pursuit. The scientist had become a detective. 